So I'm talking in Vancouver with Mark van der Gijs. And Mark, I've been meeting in China when he was doing Tudao, and now he's in Vancouver and he's a Bitcoin slash blockchain uh, investor. And I'm really happy to report that he will come to the uh, Blockchain Innovation Conference in uh, at June 22nd. Mark, I'm really happy to get you there. Um, what is uh, what? What are the biggest trends in uh, blockchain investments at the moment? Well, there's a lot of a lot of things are happening. What what you basically see is that I think there was a bit of a hype in, in in blockchain companies about a year ago, then it cooled down a bit, and now what you're seeing is that uh, a lot of companies actually are, are you know bringing products to market. So the the hype is over, I think a little bit. You still read about it, but less than a year ago, mm -hmm. and now you see the real the real the real the real the real, you know, the real products getting to market. Um, and in many fields, actually, uh, banks are using them for for uh, for transfer of of, of money. Um, companies are using them for uh, yeah, as, as distributed databases. Um, mm -hmm. Startups are using them for all kinds of things, um, from you know putting diamonds on the blockchain to uh, tools to create trust between companies. So there's a lot of things happening. Um, and it's finally and it's market. finally the first products are coming to the market. Well, one of the things you were talking to me about, which I thought was really interesting, was a logistical blockchain application that. People who uh, companies who work with Fox, uh, Foxcom, who is one of the most complicated um, uh, logistical network supply networks of the world, they use blockchain to basically say that they have a relationship with a specific uh, suppliers. How does that work? Yeah, so the way it works is that Foxconn has, of course, many many suppliers, and these suppliers also have suppliers, and those sub suppliers also have suppliers, and the suppliers that work directly with Foxconn can easily get get credit from a bank. Mm -hmm. uh, but the ones that are sub suppliers or even you know even layer uh, lower in, the, in, the, in that layer uh, have problems doing this mm -hmm. and basically through the blockchain they're able to to show that they are indeed sub suppliers for a specific products that Foxconn uh, produces um, and so they can use a blockchain tool to, to sort of um, uh, to prove this yeah, and, yeah. yeah and the way the way it works actually is that they, they work with a, a peer to peer lending company that actually provides the uh, the, um, uh, the credit to these companies. Okay, and so it's a peer-to-peer -peer lending company, who, <laughs> you know, which mm -hmm. we all know, I mean, is, is big and, and, and was hyped and is now ba basically maybe on the, on the way back or or basically are, uh, are starting to prove themselves. And that lending yeah. company is helping suppliers of Foxcom to get credit because they use they have a certain reputation and the reputation is on the, is is kept on the blockchain and the and the company has right. the ability to prove through um, that they have this relationship with uh, Foxcom and not only with Foxcom but with a speak that they do for for Apple for example work on the iPad and that they can use yep. to get credit that's how it works yeah. so for that part that they that 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 they uh, that they work on uh, for, for for Foxcom that for that part they can get, get credit and it, that goes on on the uh, that basically there are loans on the on the peer to peer lending platform that uh, that people can invest in, and uh, that's how they get their, their credits. Yeah. yeah, last year I, last year um, you were with Richard Branson on an island uh, talking to a lot of uh, different people. I mean, Branson was really interested into it. So you say that was a little bit of a hype. What what mm -hmm. kind of investments have you been doing uh, since then, and what 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 do you see uh, as as one of the most interesting things uh, markets which are really coming up? Because this year we really one of our conference we want to focus on practical examples. Yeah, well, I'm I'm, I'm pretty busy with a, a blockchain company that I set up myself, and I uh, uh, also co-founded a Bitcoin investment trust in Canada, basically a uh, um, yeah a bit, bit like an ETF I would say, like an electronically traded fund. Where people buy shares in the in the funds, and these shares represent bitcoins or a small part of a bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So basically, making it easier for people to buy bitcoin, and e also easier to, to keep the bitcoin safe. Um, I think one of the biggest problems for people uh, who want to buy bitcoin is that they just don't know how it works, and if they know how it works, they're afraid that they you know that they get hacked and that they lose their bitcoins. Mm -hmm. And this makes it easier. This is uh, as a fund where people can just buy shares, and it will eventually be listed here in the uh, on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this ETF, it's interesting that you mentioned that because last Friday um, there was supposed to come an ETF which allowed every fund in the world to invest in Bitcoins in a in a, yeah. in a, in a you know, normally financial orchestrated way and it, uh, the, 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 um, it failed because yeah. uh, the, 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 um, 
the control uh, organization, what was it called? Yeah. The SEC. Yeah. Yeah. SEC. SEC finally didn't approve it. But you say you, the moment that normal that normal financial institutions can invest in blo blockchain and in Bitcoin applications, then you think the price of the Bitcoin will go up tremendously, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's pure uh, supply and demand. Um, the supply of Bitcoin is fixed. So if demand goes up, uh, the price goes up. And I think, you know, once, once a big ETF launches, like the one that the Winklevoss brothers were planning to, uh, to bring to market, um, you know, oh, which, hundreds of millions of dollars. Oh, what was the name of, of those brothers? The Winklevoss brothers. Are these the fast uh, Facecom, uh, Facebook yeah, the, guys, the Facebook investors? They, they wanted to set up a yeah. uh, Bitcoin investment fund? So that That's everybody could invest guys, in Bitcoin. Yeah. They okay, and yeah. they and they yeah. uh, so they haven't got permission yet. But you think that moment that that moment that will happen that the um, demand will go up tremendously. Yeah. Then you see an exponential change in prices. That's that's what I expect. I mean, if if nothing else happens, I mean, right now the bit the the, the whole Bitcoin world is in a uh, in a bit of a crisis since in the for, since the past two days uh, because a hard fork may occur. Uh, there are two groups basically within Bitcoin that want to go in a different direction and that's you know has a has a negative effect on the prices right now but i think we'll we'll, we'll solve it eventually yeah yeah okay but, but uh, that's I mean, there's always been a, going yeah. above the market uh, for a long time but you think it's now really happening is it now no, because it's, yeah. the, the proposed fork had 25 percent of the uh, of the of the uh, miners but where yeah. wh what is happening now what's the most uh, act what's the most uh, latest news well, basically, <coughs> Roger Ver, the uh, Bitcoin Jesus is his nickname, uh, put his full weight behind uh, Bitcoin Unlimited and also his Bitcoin.com domain name is behind it now. And they're trying to get the uh, Chinese miners to uh, to sign up uh, under Bitcoin Unlimited. And if that works, uh, it, it's going to be it's going to be negative. I think we're going to get two different kinds of Bitcoins, um, Bitcoin Unlimited and, and, you know, the Bitcoin Classic or whatever you call it. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. We'll, we'll we'll find out over the next couple of days. But uh, it's not a good thing. It, it shows that the Bitcoin community is not able to 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 uh, to, to um, find solutions for problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what we what we had with the Ethereum uh, fork, which happened last yeah. year directly after our conference because of a hack into the smart contract. Uh, finally, about the block size is now uh, is now coming to a close. But you think it's not going to be a peaceful project? It's going to be two different. Uh, there's going to be two different bot, uh, bitcoins. Yeah, I'm worried about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, we'll see. It's uh, you know, Bitcoin things change every day and every week, and it's you know, it's interesting as yeah. well to see. What's Are you happens. investing yeah. more in the in the applications which make use of the public uh, Bitcoin um, blockchain or of private blockchains? Um, it's a combination of both, but if, if, if private blockchains are involved, I always make sure that they're anchored on the, on a public blockchain because a private blockchain, you know, is less secure, uh, can theoretically be hacked. Um, but if you, if you anchor it on a public blockchain, that doesn't, that doesn't work. Then for example, every, every hour you, you, uh, you, um, you anchor it on, on a public one. And that means only within that hour, you could theoretically do something and, and change it after the hour it's, it's, it's locked again. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So the private part is only if you have a huge amount of very fast transactions, but you pre you prefer to have it uh, locked into an, uh, an, an a public blockchain. And doesn't matter if it's Ethereum yeah. or or Bitcoin. Uh, well, Bitcoin is the most secure one, so that that is always the best one. But I mean, Ethereum is good as well. It's it's, it's pretty pretty big nowadays. So yeah. Okay. Well, when you come next, uh, when you come on, in June the twenty second to uh, the Netherlands, mm -hmm. um, we're going to have a breakfast session for a, with a couple of um, with a couple of investors who really want to meet you. A couple of companies want to meet you, and also yeah. we're going to uh, you're going to do an, uh, a keynote, and we're also participating in a uh, vertical uh, in a vertical business uh, in a business business uh, track. Um, yeah. Are you uh, are you doing a lot of business in uh, in Europe at the moment, or um, is it mostly Asia where you're uh, where you're no, from? No, hardly, hardly anything in Europe. It's uh, I, I focus actually on North America, and I do a couple of investments in in China as well. But even that, I'm kind of reducing. So it's it's really the focus is really on North America for me at the moment. Hmm. So what to, kind of reputation do we have? Uh, what kind of reputation do we have in Europe? Um, well, it's more of it, you know, it, it, it's for me, it's, it's for time zone dependent. I don't, I don't want to, you know, work 24, 24 seven anymore. And, you know, working with Europe means getting up very early in the morning to like now to the I got there. you out of bed like on right now, Sunday yeah. morning and say, hey, come uh, on, Mark, <laughs> let's have a quick interview. Let's yeah. see what's, uh, what's going on. But you don't want to do that anymore. Europe is too, uh, no. too far away in time zones. 
it's uh it's yeah it's it's not it's not not that easy to do is do it so yeah <laughs> and what do you see from coming from Europe? Because I mean, we have a lot of people enthusiastic about the blockchain too. Of, of course, all yeah. the big guns and especially also the big investments are coming from uh, America. But uh, mm -hmm. do you do you see some interesting uh, trends uh, happening here too? Well, I mean, Switzerland is is, is, very, is very well known for its uh, open policies for Bitcoin and blockchain. So a lot of the of the big companies actually that 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 left the U.S. moved to Switzerland and and set up their their, their business there. Um, so I think that that is a, that's a good trend, an important trend. Um, I think other countries sort of missed the boat there. They could have done it as well, but they didn't. They didn't see the opportunity. Um, if I look in terms of companies, I mean, most most Bitcoin companies, blockchain companies, are very international. Mm -hmm. um, that means they're not not focused just on the US or just on China. Um, so it's, yeah, I mean, it's I, I, it's I think there, there's some good ones in Europe. There's some good ones in North America. There are good ones in in China. It's okay. uh, it's not that that's that Bitcoin is just a U.S. Uh, U.S. thing. Yeah. Well, we're going to show you during the conference. We're going to have all kinds of examples from the healthcare industry, the energy, uh, the energy, the logistics, uh, of course, and and, and fintech. Yep. So um, we'd love to have you around, and we'll see you then on uh, June twenty second. And thanks for getting up so early in the morning in Vancouver. You're welcome. Looking forward to it. Okay. Thanks Bye. for that. Bye.